All right, so disassembling a 14 volt axle so we can do a disc brake conversion. Still has the heavy drums. They're heavier than disc brakes, plus they're harder to service, and if you're running this in any kind of mud, they just get clogged up and they're not very good. So we're going to show you how you pull this axle. <clears throat> Obviously I got it jacked up on a jack stand. Now, we're just going to remove these bolts holding the actual axle in the housing. Alright, so I've got all of our bolts off. <clears throat> now, instead of trying to pry this off the easiest way, it's with a hammer. Just want to hit it right here in the center of the flange. Just need to give it a couple easy taps. No need to go crazy on it. Like I said, I've already popped this one loose, so the silicone's not, not holding it. But you can just give it a couple easy taps and you'll see it actually separate from the hub. That's all you need to do. Now just gently pull it out. Now my hub here, let me see if I can get the camera in here, is uh, one of the easier ones to take apart because it has just has the keyway with a little spring holding it in. Some of the other 14 bolts will have a couple different washers and nuts to hold us in where this is just one nut, a keyway, and then a spring. Just take a small screwdriver get that spring out. Now the fun part is trying to dig out that little key. So give me just a minute. Okay, so what I did, I actually didn't have a pickup magnet small enough to go in there, so I used a bigger one. And then I used the keyway from the other side which is much longer. See if you can see a comparison of those two there. And All right, you can actually get a socket specifically for this nut, but seeing as mine had the keyway with a spring, a lot of times you can actually just take it off with a screwdriver. It'll just fit one of the notches. It comes out pretty easy. There you have it. Now, all you gotta do is just pull the drum off. times that it's easier if you have a nice big long screwdriver let you get some leverage on some of this stuff especially because some of it you don't know how long it's been in there Now, we still have the emergency brake here. We just got to get it loose. What I like to do is there's a little retainer clip on that bracket. Take that clip off and push that pin down and get rid of that brake shoe so you're not having to hold it. All right. 
The only thing left is where the emergency brake cable comes through the backing plate. There's a little keeper on there. It's got a couple of nubs. It's easiest with a small screwdriver. Just bust those off. And then you can pull it out. Okay, so now I got all the shoes out of the way. We need to get the backing plate off, but we also need to get that brake line loose. The problem is, is it's recessed down in here. So I didn't have any luck getting a line wrench on it. It won't line up because you can't get it on straight. So what we're going to do instead I don't think you can hardly see them, but there are two bolts that hold this piston in. We're going to take those loose so this can move. Then we'll take our backing plate loose and it can rotate out of the way. And then we'll try to get that line loose. Doesn't take much, just a little bit to get them loose. to that line nut. That should be all. Alright, now that the backing plate's off, I scraped off a lot of the loose gunk, and then we're just going to clean it up a little bit. Now when scraping off anything, you want to be real careful where your seal sits. You don't want to scratch and mar that up. Let's get the studs out. 